Hello, I'm Isaac Ostrom. I'm a licensed tile contractor in Northern California. Thank you for watching another one of my videos. So today I'm here to show you the finished product of this project we've been working on. The shower that I did that failed, there was a one coat float and the ceramic tile cracked. And so I wanted to show you the finished product. It's a beautiful shower. Everything came out really nice. I'm really happy with this. We've done not one repair, not two repairs, but this was the third repair. And the third repair, I finally just said to heck with it. We're redoing the whole thing. Let's tear it all out, rip it down to studs. Let's start over. So there's a lot of things I found out. And again, thank you, thank you, thank you for leaving your comments, the suggestions. I get a huge response from people trying to help out. Of course, there's a few here and there that are negative and, and that's all good. You guys have your opinion you're entitled to it, but that's like two out of a hundred comments that I get. So thank you for leaving those. We're making our industry better when we share information. And uh, I found out a lot about this project and I believe that there was two main contributing factors to the original fail. One of them was putting paper behind our one coat float. But what that does is separate the float from the wall makes it easy for that mortar to cure and bow off of the wall because the only thing that's held in there is staples into drywall. Everything is only held in with these little staples. So we are changing our methods. We've gone away from the paper, especially now that we have Dent Shield and the Duroc fiberglass mat reinforced chipsum panels. I, those are waterproof already. They have a waterproof coating on the fr front of them. So why would you need paper if you're doing a one coat float? That way the mortar can stick to the wall and it creates one solid surface between the wall board and the float. So basically you have one inch of good substrate material as opposed to when you put paper, you only have a half inch max. A lot of times our floats get thinner, even to three eighths in some areas, maybe a quarter inch. And that's a very weak substrate when it's separated from the wall. So we've changed that. We've also started nailing into the studs so we not only staple our wire up, we put a roofing nail that penetrates through the wall board all the way into the stud, at least an inch into the stud. And that way the wire is fastened to the framing members as well, creating. A but what we've ended up with is, is a gorgeous shower. Again, this was actually seven days of labor for us to redo, plus the material, plus all the tile. So the first, first problem was with our, our float wasn't attached to the wall. So not only did our one coat float not bond to the wall and come loose and start to crack, the tile that we used was very soft. So this is a four by 10 and see how soft this is. Watch, I can just take this tile and snap it really soft and doesn't have any give to it. So if there's anything going on in your substrate, you don't have any leeway. And again, things move. We are on clay soils, we're on expansive soils. Uh, this is an exterior wall. So it heats up and cools down, expansion and contraction there. So it's just another factor that can lead to a job issue. So we went back in with porcelain tile, which is rated for floors. It's a much harder, durable product. And so not only did we improve our floating technique on this one, we improved the tile that went in here too. So I'm feeling really good about this. You can see when we float our wall, I get a lot of questions why we even float walls. I mean, that's one of the biggest questions I get. You guys say it's overkill, you've never heard of it. It's a great method and I've taught this method. I'll put a link up so you can see how we float walls. Uh, but what that allows us to do is get a perfectly flat and straight and plumb and strong substrate when it's done right, of course. But let me show you with the level. When I put my level on these walls, I mean, it's, it's like dead nuts. And this allows, this does a couple things. Not only does it look better, but all of your cuts on your inside corners are gonna be the same if your wall is plumb, but it just looks great. And the other question I get a lot is how do we trim out the edge uh, when we float, you know, we got this half an inch of build out and how do we treat the edge? Well, uh, in this instance, there's a few different ways to do it. But in this instance, we took, we took the bullnose trim that came with the tile. And this was actually a three inch by 24 inch trim piece. And we ripped it down to however thick we needed, which in this instance is about an inch, maybe seven eighths or so. And it varies because 
the drywall next to it isn't perfectly straight. So we kind of scribe in against the drywall and we call this a cap. Got the finished edge of the factory bullnose on here. We miter up in the corners. We do the top and it creates a really nice trim piece. I think this looks a lot better than when you put the 3x24 on its side, which you do for the, the surface, and it just cuts the whole pattern up. This way with a cap, it looks finished. It gives our tile job a little substance, stronger and thicker, and a really nice way to trim it out. So, so again, thank you for sticking with me on this project. First video I uploaded, and I'll put that card up here too, was showing when we came in and we just were hoping to just repair the cracked wall tiles. Well, that didn't work because we just started cracking more as we went and the wall started getting worse. So about two or three months went by to when we can come back in and I decided we just need to redo this whole thing. So, so there's other videos showing the tear out. There's other videos showing the rebuild and waterproofing. So make sure to check those out. That'll be the next video coming up. I'm gonna put it here on the end screen. So make sure to watch that video. And thank you, thank you for sticking with me here and just being part of this movement. So make sure to watch that next video coming up. It's showing the process of rebuilding this thing. I love you. I love being your tile coach. And we'll see you on the next video.